much, Mal. You're a busy man, so thank you for finding time for me. What I'd like to talk about is what PowerCo is doing. Obviously, the battery is the heart of everything that's happening now in electric mobility. Yeah. You know that, I don't need to tell you that. No. Um, on the one side, we've got the vehicles, this lovely vehicle. I've got an ID Buzz, by the way. I like it. Yeah, thank you, so do I. Um, so, of course, I'm very keen on the battery doing a great job for the vehicle yeah. and moving it. I'm also very keen, Thomas, and like to talk about this, in vehicle-to-grid technology okay. when it happens. So, how my vehicle can be much more than just a mobility device, it can be an extension of the home. Exactly the grid so I'd like to talk about that um, so yeah what, what when can we see bi-directional charging in my buzz and everybody else's VW okay it's a it's a phase-in strategy for yep. bi-directional charging uh, it depends on AC or DC charging bi-directional and you'll see the first cars in uh, Volkswagen coming up 24 middle of 24 and then we're ramping it up okay so, so, so mine is pre-equipped with this it's in the menu I can see it in there but what you're saying is in terms of the integration then into a home charger yeah. that allows me to do it, that's, you know, a year, yeah, two yeah, years yeah. away. One that's, year that's and then we start with the product portfolio, ramping it up. And we, we, are, we will supply the fully ecosystem, as you're told. Uh, we will take care that your home energy system is matching with your car, that the solar panel on the roof is matching with your home system, and we manage the grid also for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, intraday trading with energy because what is a what is a problem um, with sustainable energy it's not that we have a lack of sustainable energy it's we need balance it yes we need balance it and that is the reason why we are expecting that more than 30 percent of total production of energy of battery cells in the future will go in that business for storage yeah. for storage to balance to balance the, the sustainable energy yeah uh, great so They've all got batteries in. You've got to make the batteries first of all. Can we can we have a look at this? Yeah. Is your Salzgitter plant, isn't it? This is Salzgitter plant. So, the so that is, that's not it yet. You haven't built it yet, but you are building it now. Aren't the first you? block is more or less ready. Okay. We have unboxed the first equipment some weeks before. Yeah. It's a record time. Um, everything shining blue is a battery, and everything white is combustion engine. Right. So we are. It's a big transforming story. Also, we're transforming that plant because in 26 you will not see any combustion engine we will do only cells there indeed uh, and we have two blocks the main blocks here you see every block have around about 20 gigawatt hours this gives us a tailor-made ramping up possibility yeah because we're not making one big building it was one line not knowing what the future will bring so step by step following the ramp up volume of the group we are establishing block by block this will be the first factory for us uh, 25 sop start of production Delivering the first cells out of Salzgitter. Um, Spain, second factory in Sagunto, a 60 gigawatt, and a really big one in Canada, in St. Thomas, with 100 gigawatt hours, with wow. the biggest one uh, in 27. N now, that, that's great. You know, love the ambition. It's great to see it happening. What about supply chain? What about the raw materials? What about all the lithium, cobalt, manganese, copper, whatever chemistries you're using? How is that coming together? Because that's a yeah. big challenge, isn't it? That's the biggest challenge uh, because everybody thinks the factory is a challenge. The factory is a big challenge yeah, because sure. new technology, and you see that a lot of companies are struggling, not, not able to ramp it up uh, yeah. as, as necessary. But it's only 20% only, 20% of cell cost. It's done by production, operation, and factory. 80% yes. is raw material. Yeah. And raw material chain, securing raw material chain, um, and Unfortunately, the raw material is not in places where we are living. It's not in Europe. Yeah. So you go to North America, Canada, we need to go to Australia, we need to go to Africa, South America to get nickel, lithium and cobalt. And if you have it, that's only half away because then you need to refine it. Uh, you need to refine um, the um, raw material also to come to cathode or island material. Uh, what is the second uh, challenge? Because you need localized refining and we do that with a partner. Yeah, it's Umicore, a Belgian company. Yeah. And so he's ramping up now in Europe the first facilities because they don't have any uh, facilities in Europe or in North America to, to make it. Yeah, but, but, but it's curious that you're talking there about a chemical company because when you look at, well, Belgium, even in the UK, we have real strength in the chemical industry. And of course, this is an electrochemical device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's only logical that we're seeing more of this. Um, honestly, I've got so many questions, but I'm not going to fire them all at you. But just, just a final one. You mentioned we don't have those raw materials in Europe. Um, and certainly, you're, I think you're right in the main, but from what I hear from talking to a few geologists, there are resources that might be liberated in places 
as, as the demand comes in and the value of that mine uh, proposition is there, um, you know, I'm not going to go through the list because, you know, that's probably not appropriate, but there are, there are some places, I believe, so maybe we can have some good surprises. Yeah, it's, it's no, no, exactly what you told, it's not that we have in general a lag or we are short in material, it's the problem of timing. We don't have the capacity in the right. short term okay. because um, if you look to all our car suppliers, we all will catch up e-mobility really strong in 26. 25, 26 will be the breaking points for ramping up e-mobility, the hell of product portfolio, yeah. hell of ramping up of volume. And that comes all together in, in one or two years. Yes, yes. And in, in the, in the midterm, we will have sufficient capital, and even in the long term, even better, because we, ha we are working in closed loops. Closed loop means that we will, re we will get the batteries back and then we are recycling the batteries yeah. and we are able and, and we have inside Skitter in that building there, there's recycling, uh, there's a recycling uh, equipment. You can recycle more than 90% of the raw material. That it's what the smartphone um, yeah. suppliers do even today. Well, it's, what's it called? Urban mining, isn't it? It's, it's mining it from within where you've used it. Yeah. It makes complete sense. So we've looked at the vehicle. We've looked at you're building a battery factory here and in Spain and in Canada. Massive one in Canada, 100 gigawatts. That's a big one. Can we can we go in, as the charging yeah, yeah, sure. over here? So, so when you look at the integration now between more people buying electric vehicles, the batteries in them not just working for mobility, also using being used for energy yeah. for the grid and for people's homes. Where where does the public charging proposition fit in in, in your mind? How are we going to get those right in the right place, doing the right job? So exactly, uh, we underestimated. Um, that uh, in, uh, charging infrastructure is one of the major reasons to buy or not buy an EV car. Yeah. So what we are doing is uh, we have our units, we have Electrify America, we have Ellie in Europe and we have Kams in China and all three uh, working really hard to ramping up charging infrastructure. Um, we doing sometimes for ourselves, sometimes or in the major part of our time, we are selling this hardware equipment here. This is a power bank for cars. Mm. You know, power bank from your laptop yeah. or from your smartphone. And my idea was to say, okay, um, we have critical grid stabilization in one, a lot of regions. We have critical timing reasons. So what this is, this is a battery buffer inside. Right. So I'm disconnecting um, the charging process from the grid. I've got it. Yeah. It's recharged continuously. And it doesn't matter when you come, it's probably always then loaded, you can charge your car, but you don't, you don't uh, have any problem with your grid because it's not a peak, peak charging, it's over the day reloaded. And that's going to help in a lot of rural areas, a lot of yeah. places where tr you need, typically... You, you need only uh, a low voltage connector, right. so you don't need a high voltage connector. So you can put it where you want, it's flexible, that's also an idea if it's yeah. for events, because you don't know where the people like to charge, yeah? and if yeah. we see, okay, they don't like to charge here, we take it and take it another place. You don't yes. need have infrastructure. Final quick question. Like I said, there are so many I'd love to ask you, but I know I've just got you for a short while. Uh, people, you, you spoke about it earlier. You've already hired a lot of people. You've cherry picked some really top people from the industry. How much of a challenge is that? And what would you say, for example, if young people are watching this and thinking about coming into the industry and looking at coming and working at a gigafactory? Is that something you, know, you want younger people to come and do? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, they come automatically because um, it's, it's a startup culture. It's not you're coming in a big group with all the administration, uh, with all these old men talking to you, saying what you should do, you know. They have, the show is really different. The show is different. It's, it's fantastic, and fantastic content. You can, you have, will, you will, your work will have an impact to change the world. Yeah. That's first attractive for everybody, especially young people saying, okay, I like to change world. Yeah. Second is, you have the agility of a startup company. Uh, PowerCore is a startup with a full firepower of Volkswagen in the background. Mm. So anything in resources you need, we deliver as a group, but it's their own legal entity. They have their own rules, their own legislation. So they do as a startup. And this is fantastic for young people. So that's the reason why they say, okay, that's the reason to join the party. Got because it. it's, you're, you're the only one doing it so consequently and in that speed what we see. Yeah. Well, look, I wish you well. Everybody does. I, I mean, I certainly do as a customer of, of driving the vehicle. Of course, I want you to succeed and, and get all this to, no, to work. So thank you for your Roger, time thank and you. good luck. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Shun. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you.